Hello everybody, let me fix this camera a little bit here. Boop, that looks a little bit better. Um, hello and welcome to the Clockwork Game Dev Show. My name is Keith Bergun. It's nice to see you and meet you. And let's talk today about the strategy game Triangle. There's like a tangent that's bothering me in this shot. Uh, but anyways, uh, today we're talking about the strategy game Triangle. Uh, my name is Keith Bergun. This is the Clockwork Game Dev Show. Uh, I will be uploading this video later on to YouTube. Uh, so if you miss this stream, uh, you can check it out later. Um, but I have recently launched this thing. It's a little thing. It's not, the, you know, in terms of the content that you can actually download from itch, it's just this little zip file and in it, it contains some blank triangles, um, that you can use for, uh, this, uh, process and I see I got rid of the circle there that's that was a mistake actually I have to fix that um but uh yeah let's see here um got the examples um we have some PSDs if you uh if you want to play with those um actually I think I put the wrong thing in I gotta update this but uh yeah this should go in here and this should not go in there. Okay, so I'll I'll, up, I'll be updating this triangle as I go. This is the first version of it. Um, it comes with a P PDF that sort of explains how to use the triangle. Um, here's a couple examples of my using similar theories to make them work. Um, this was a game that I was working on, uh, an old card game I was working on. This is Escape the Omnocronom. This is Oro. I should probably label those. Let me make myself a little list of things to do here <laughs> for the new version of the triangle. But today I'll also be explaining... Uh... Okay, uh, let's see. Insert table, boop, boop. Uh, key to do. Uh, what was it I was just gonna do? Um, don't fuck out of here. Peter Potato, how's it going, boy? Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, boop, boop, boop. Strategy game triangle. Yeah, so I have to I have to update a bunch of stuff with this. I just wanted to get this out because um, it's been something that's been useful for me. All right, so let's talk about what is the strategy game triangle. I kind of wanted to wait for people to show up before I dove into it. But um, basically, it's just a way to arrange your components, your characters, your factions, whatever it is you have in your game. It might be applicable to things other than strategy games, but this is really designed for strategy games, particularly strategy games that have... Um, you know, variable end uh, time. So if they can end early, mid, or late game. So let's um let's see. Let's talk about this. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. So there's some examples. How to use. You can open these up in Photoshop and use them as your template to build your own little triangle for your own games. Uh, they help you to know what is the role of your skeleton warrior card. You know, it has X health or Y special abilities, but what does this mean? Let's say I was designing StarCraft, trying to work on the units. By no means is the triangle the only way that this could be achieved, but we want to make sure each unit would get its own place on the triangle, uh, particularly if they're the same faction. So, for example, if you if you were... Well, first of all, let's talk about the triangle itself and what uh, these points mean. So, open up. Peter Potato says, it's going good. I had a great stream last night. Danielle gifted five subscriptions to my friends, way closer to getting my first Twitch pad. Ooh, nice. It's amazing. Congrats. Um, so Rush is trying to go for an early game win. Defense is a late game win and Econ is a mid game win. And these three have uh, sort of a rock, paper, scissors relationship with each other. So if someone is is sort of doing rushy strategies, um, then you can sort of counter them with defensive strategies. Uh, defensive strategies would like stop rush strategies. Um, meanwhile, if someone's going for defensive strategies, you can exploit that by going for an econ strategy, getting, thus getting a bump. If we go and look at my article, uh, this article here, I still need to update these graphs. Um, 
these charts on this website. But um, this is David Serlin's triangle for uh, his game Puzzle Strike. Um, and now, one thing I object to in here that I didn't talk about so much yet is he's, I think he's kind of got it. I mean, I don't know that he designed it this way. I think that the community may have put this together, but um, the issue is that he's, it's actually true that Jaina is extremely rushy. Like her whole thing is rushing. And the problem with that, and then this character, or like, let's take Arg as an example. The problem here is that you have characters that counter each other, right? Because as, as I was just explaining, um, you know, defense sort of counter, it's strong against, as this indicates, strong against rushdown. So the problem is, if I pick Jaina, you can sort of counter me by picking uh, Arg, right? So that's something we want to avoid, and that's the reason that in my triangle, this white zone is kind of like the safe zone. This is sort of where you want your characters to be, uh, particularly around the corners of the, this white triangle. Because if your character is like around here, this area here, then that means that your character can do rush and your character can do defense. So every character should have two points of the triangle that they're good at. And if that's the case, they can never get too countered, right? Because let's say there's some other character that's good at rush and econ, right? Um, well, let's say they go for rush. Well, I'm good at rush and defense, so I can play defense to counter that. Let's say they go for e econ. Well, I'm good at uh, rush, so I can go I can go rush to counter their econ. So no matter what, as long as you keep the characters in the like towards the middles of the triangles, so not at the points. So the, I should put some big red X's over these corners here. Um, in fact, let's open up the uh, the PSD itself and improve on it right now. Uh, boop, boop, boop. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, we should like label these. Where's the um? Oh, there isn't a triangle here. Interesting. Okay. So we need to make a triangle. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Right, so this here. Let's, go, let's make this like a nice blue or something. Right, this is like the safe zone. Uh, like, character... Like, safe zone, we'll just call it for now. Let's make this in a nice color that's like this, but a little darker, boom, boom. Right, boom, there we go. So that's your safe zone. Um, and again, the, the reason for that is, obviously, in your, if you're in the middle, um, actually, you know what, that, that, that brings another point to mind, is that no, no character should probably be directly in the middle. That's the other, that's kind of the other issue. Uh, that I've yet to uh, make clear in this in this uh, image. So let's do that. So the middle, middle, middle. Actually, so let's let's do this. Um, we can make this triangle a little bit bigger. So sorry that this is a little bit messy, but it's just like we're trying to get like this concept across. It's it's more about the concept than the. So that, that's the other thing is I try to explain in the PDF like don't take anything here too like a hundred percent literally. Um, these are tools that are supposed to try to make uh, things uh, easier. And I use these tools all the time, but I, I don't always have the... Uh... No more birds! All right, so what's up, no more birds? So actually... Yeah, there's going to be like a, a black hole in the middle here. I don't know how big. But you don't actually want... You should look for terms that are less StarCraft. Okay, sure. What's uh, more generally applicable? I'm all ears. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I don't think of them as StarCraft. Honestly, Puzzle Strike is my main game that I think of in, in regards to this. Um, uh, or what else? Um, or my own games. Uh, but yeah, if you have other, you know, I also like early, late, mid, uh, which I have here. Those are, those are good. I like rush, defense, econ, because it actually sort of is in the vernacular a little bit already. Let's make this circle centered in this circle. Boop, boop. There we 
There we go. All right, so this area, I didn't think of StarCraft from this at all. This seems pretty universal to me. Yeah, that's the goal. But I mean, I agree that like there is some association between the word rush and StarCraft because like Zergling rushes are really famous. Literally never hear anyone use those terms than you. Yeah, but you don't hear anyone use like any game design terms other than me. Right? Like people just don't talk about game design very much. Uh, econ is always the one that feels weird to me. Like it's just not actually what it is on the triangle. Why is econ a mid game win and not a late game win as well? Well, the idea is that an econ would have like a, a uh, everything, everything is like a bump, you know, sort of that has a bump. Um, and the econ has, uh, has a spike. Everything has a spike, right? So actually I was opening this thing to show, to show. Yeah, I was trying to show this. Yeah, and I, and the defense one is actually the one that's fucked up here. Uh, I need to update this. In fact, maybe that's something we could do today. Um, because I've been meaning to do this forever. But, uh, so the idea is, uh, this right here is a rush game. So rush has an early spike, and you're able to win, uh, with that early spike. This is an econ win, right? So you're investing here, and then you have a spike at some point. But at some point, that spike is gonna fall off. Think of it like, um, they're, they're like mid-game characters in League of Legends. Try to stay away from StarCraft as the example, because... The crouch mode doesn't like that. Um, so so the, there are characters in League of Legends or Dota or any of those games that have a mid-game spike. But at some point, that mid-game spike falls off. And then there are some characters who are late-game characters um, in League of Legends, like um, like Kale. Um, I think Nasus is probably one. Vigar. And... Uh, now, of course, these are all abstractions in, in real life. It would just be this huge, messy, crazy, weird thing. And I have to update this as well. This is, has some confusing components to it. But uh, yeah, uh, econ is, so it's, why is it a mid game win? I mean, uh, I guess it's like, there, you agree that there are some strategies that would lead to a mid game win, right? Uh, I get the mid game spike. I just don't get what that has to do with econ. Well, yeah, you don't have to call it econ. I mean, yeah, I agree that, I mean, because like everything is, you know, everything's a little bit econ. Defense is a little econ. Rush is a little bit econ, you know? Um, yeah, so I, I think that this may be actually a pretty valid uh, reason to not use these like RTS sort of terms. By the way, these terms are also popular, surprisingly, in fighting games. Um, and actually Magic, I think, has similar terms. Um, they use, I think they use rush and like control as, I think control is their word for defense. Um, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, we can, we can get away from the word econ. Um, you're right. There's nothing, I mean, it's all econ, right? Like everything is economy. I, I, I agree the word econ is, is weird. Um, uh, but they're all actually kind of weird if you think about it. Like they're all not exactly right. But here's what I like about it conceptually, like narratively, like think of it like, um, let me fix this Michael video a little bit. Uh, think of it like, um, think of it like, uh, you know, like the word rush actually kind of communicates the right thing to me, I think. Cause it's like uh, this early burst, right? And we all know like, like what a, what a ru rush or a blitz is like all about, like we get that. And it, to me, the relationships between these terms do make sense. Like rush um, gets blocked by defense, right? You're, you're building towers and stuff like that. Like I, I totally get that. Defense is outlasting, right? Um, but I agree that it doesn't explain all the things. If you guys have just things you'd rather replace these with, um, you know, I'm all ears. I don't care that much about the terms. These are the ones I use. I think they're decently commonly used in, in you know, to the extent that anyone talks about this stuff, which is, I agree, Marcus, is almost no one. Um, yeah, so that, that, is, that is an issue. Um, yeah, anyway, what I was working on here uh, was, whoops, yeah, this, is that actually, and this is another important thing, um, and I didn't add, include this yet, no-go zone. 
this would be the no-go zone. Uh, let's make it like the same colors and stuff as the, uh, I'm not complaining for aesthetic reasons. I just don't really get it. Okay. That's, that's better. I, I like that. I like, I prefer that because that, how's it going, Ryan? Thanks for subscribing. Um, no, not one pixel. So, uh, so, okay. So let's, let, let's start from the beginning. Like, what is this and why does this matter? And what even is this? Um, so, so any set of strategies, uh, or any, like, um, any game that takes place, any strategy game that takes place, there's going to be um, sort of like power spikes, right? Uh, that happen as a result of strategic decisions that are made. And there's gonna be windows where you can win the game. And um, again, this would only apply to, uh, to games that have variable match length, right? So Race for the Galaxy might be an example here, actually. Um, so there's a way that you can go for an early game win, right? And if they're going for, if you sort of detect like, oh, they're kind of going for an early game win. So whatever we put, let's call that A, right? We don't need to use the word rush. We can say early game win, A. Then I, as a, as a player, can be like, okay, well, there's all these things I have to do strategically. There's these units I have to build. There's these, you know, uh, types of like actions I have to play in Race for the Galaxy that are sort of like a response to that, that, that sort of mitigates that. And so what that ha what happens is, so you start going a little bit here, right? Like you start leaning into this direction. Then I start leaning into this direction, which is a, a defensive response sort of that, that mitigates your ability to find that early game win window. And, and then we start like sort of pulling towards this a little bit. And then you might be like, okay, well, I think he's actually shut that window for me, that early game window. And now I'm gonna switch over to doing a little bit more econ because he's going defense. He's like investing in, in sort of like defensive actions and he's sort of wasting his time or I can make him be wasting his time by, uh, by now switching gears a little bit and going into an econ thing. And then he's like, okay, he's going into econ. So now I'm gonna start rushing again because he's vulnerable again. He's, you know what I mean? Um, uh, Let's see, I, No More Bird says, I thought by this being a triangle, the only no-go spots were outside the triangle. Well, outside the triangle is actually just, doesn't exist, really. Um, uh, like it, 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 well, anything outside the triangle would be something that's not strategically valid at all. Like, like flipping the table, you know, in chess would be outside the triangle. Um, like everything within the triangle sh should be balanced, right? Yeah, so balance is, um, this doesn't directly interact with balance. It, it might suggest certain things about your balance, but it wouldn't directly like indicate like, yes, this is balanced, no, this is not balanced. But what it would do is like tell you, okay, this has a specific identity that is distinct from these other components. Now it could still be too strong. For example, like let's say, you know, um, trying to think of another example here. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, it's hard to think of examples that everyone knows. That's why I also like StarCraft. Everyone knows StarCraft. Uh, not everyone knows Puzzle Strike, and not everyone knows Race for the Galaxy. Um, but, like, yeah. So stick with me with the StarCraft for now. So, like, you know, if Zerglings are a little bit here, you know, towards Rush, and, I don't know, Dark Templars are a little bit more over here towards Econ or whatever, we can see that they are distinct from each other. So they're like, they're, they have distinctive qualities from one another, but we can't see that they're balanced, right? Like it could still be the case that, that, um, that Zerglings are stronger or Dark Templars are stronger, but at least we can see that they have distinctive roles in, in the thing. Uh, I just tuned in a few minutes ago, Michu Michu. Hey Michu Michu. I wanna save this triangle forever. Oh, sweet. Um, you can also think about it as power spikes or as timing attack windows. So it's often about when the spikes happen. Yeah, it's, it's, and I mean, I think strategy games, uh, ones that have variable win, uh, you know, times, or I don't know, I need to get that terminology down, but um, they, it's always about that, right? It's always about finding that window. If you're playing a strategy game, usually anything you're doing is within one of these three phases, right? Or it can at least be described as like, and that's another thing. Um, so, so this circle, 
is like I, I really don't I think that this is also a no-go zone. This is also a no-go zone, and this is also a no-go zone. So like what I, I really would put like this I, I don't think uh hmm. Like this would be like a no-go zone for factions or characters, right? Uh so maybe you could have a unit that's in here, but you don't want uh factions, characters. So I need a different symbol for this. Also, I'm talking about 10 things at once. I need to, uh, uh, I need to, like, chill out. But yeah, let's, um, let's make a smaller X here. Here, here this is what I'm gonna do. Let me just finish this thought real quick, and then, uh, and then we can talk about what I'm talking about. So, line tool. Do, do, do. do I have weird lines? Oh, I have arrowheads. I don't want those. Uh, nothing. Yeah. And way smaller. Like two, maybe? It's way too... What the hell? Why is it so thick? Oh, I see. Bad. Boom. Boom. Uh, is there a way I can not ruin my chart with this? Something like that, yeah. Uh, these would all be, um, <clears throat> go zone for factions, characters, for, well, for, uh, pre-game choices. Let's put it that way. Okay, so, so the idea here, I can put this, um, does this make sense? That basically I'm saying, uh, characters... Races, anything you can pick before the game starts, which, by the way, I, I should also mention, I'm generally just, I don't think you should be able to pick things before the game starts. But if we're allowing that, um, you really shouldn't, uh, shouldn't have there be like a rush character or a rush faction. Um, does this have, these have like outlines on them. It's like screwing everything up. One second here. Yeah, these guys. Hold on. I'm just gonna hack this. Hacking it. Hacking it. Doing an overlay of a color to fix my Photoshop problems. Color overlay. Boom. Oh. Did I forget someone? No. I don't know what happened. Okay. Why didn't that work? What the fuck? Color overlay is not working? That's bizarre. I think it was because it was still, uh, it had still had the, uh, color overlay. Black. There we go. Okay. Make this smaller. All right, let's catch up on the chat. Sorry, everybody. Um, an early spike beats a late game spike strat. A mid game spike beats an early one. If you're playing a, uh, if you're playing, well, a mid game spike doesn't beat an early one because an early spike would actually be exploiting the investment done uh, to do get an in -game, a mid game spike, Eli. So if someone is going, so this is a mid game spike. If someone's going for this, that means that actually early they're vulnerable, and uh, and so actually an early game there would be an early game win window possibility. You see what I'm saying? So a mid game does not beat an uh, early game. Early game would beat someone that's going for a mid game and vice versa. I think of econ as late game and defense as mid game. Yeah, see, this is why these terms like you just got for now, just got to go with my my uh, my usage of them, because I, I agree that that, you know, econ can mean like battle cruisers and stuff, you know, like really late game things. Um, so it's it's messy, these terms. In fact, you know what? For the, for the purpose of this, let's just say. Um, Let's put early win first. Yeah, so so we'll just call these early mid game. Um, and I'll put these in parentheses uh, because they're 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 related. They're how I use the terms. Uh, but they're also they are they 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 imply a lot of the right things. Not if not all. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, no more birds. I mean, something could be invincible and kill units in one hit. 
That would theoretically be max defense and max rush. Yeah. Totally break the game and fall outside the triangle. Right. I mean, yeah. So, so and here's another thing you can do. Um, you can kind of take a, let's make a weird color. I don't know, like a yellow, I guess. Right. So, let, so here's another thing that you can do with this tool. You don't just have to place words. So the way I did it in my, in the graphic was, uh, as the example, I did like this, right? So now you can do it this way and you can just place the words and that's fine. But you can also, in fact, I did have an example somewhere. I think it's, did I not include it? Where is it? Yeah, here. So you can also do this kind of thing. Like, so counter crashing gems it occupies this area of the triangle. And so you could have something that's like, um, so like maybe something is like really narrowly just this. Dude, can we get rid of this stroke crap? Come on, okay. You could have something that's just narrowly like that, or you could have something that's like this, right? And it's like, it covers a much larger area. It's a lot more, so something that's more um, well-rounded. So like a Marine, for example, in StarCraft, Marines can do a lot of things, right? So Marines might be, I don't know, uh, I feel, I think that they're kind of, they would probably bias around here and they'd probably be pretty big, right? And in fact, a problem with Marines could be that Marines are actually like, they're like this or something, right? They're like, they're like, maybe they have a slight bias towards these, but they're kind of useful no matter what. And that might be an issue with Marines that we can identify with this. Now, another thing that Normal Birds is talking about is some unit that's just like, it's good at everything, right? Like a super Marine, right? And it could be just that that, that 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 just, you know, takes up the whole the whole thing is just uh, like the whole entire uh, triangle is is occupied by this thing. And so that's that's why you want to make sure that units have you want. Well, I mean, units, you know, assuming your game has something like units or creatures or whatever, summonable type things, um, you want to make sure that they they're not so narrow that they're clearly like you know you want them to be somewhere in this white circle uh or in the, in this blue uh triangle so anywhere around here is okay uh but you also don't want them to be so broad that they've lost their identity right um you you want there to be but you probably don't also want it to be i mean i don't know what it really means if something is like super tiny. I guess it just means they have one very, very narrow purpose. Um, yeah, you want, you want to occupy like a healthy amount of the triangle, I think. Um, some kind of balanced amount of the triangle, I guess. Uh, so yeah, but that's another thing you can do is like resizing um, your your uh, your sphere. So you could like, you know, write, put this here or whatever and write like Marines in there. That kind of thing. Uh, let's see. There's often many spikes throughout a match. Right. And so th th this is all super abstracted. Like I tried to explain here, there's often like, it's just this constant dance around the triangle. And what I really want, it's like this. It's like this. And, and what I really like to see is um, that dance I was talking about where it's like, oh, you're going a little bit more rush. Okay, I'm going a little bit more defense. Okay, I'm going a little bit more econ. You're going a little more rush. And we're sort of dancing around this triangle, right? That's, that's, um, that's kind of, uh, that's, that's the idea. Let me um, make another line here. None of this. Let's be the no-go zone. Oop. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's let's just improve these a little bit here. Uh, let's see. It's all in strats. Yeah. So all in strategies, uh, at the very least, should be very very rare. It should not be often the case that that would be useful. That that it would be good or useful to go for like all econ or all rush or all defense that stuff um that stuff happens in starcraft because of the weird um the fog of war system like where you just kind of are like you like get away with this thing where um normally you would never be able to get away with uh but it's just because uh you know you're hoping the other player doesn't see that you are doing this thing um but in, in a game with like a healthy controlled information horizon 
you would have some kind of regular, very regular uh, information coming in about what the other player is doing. And so you'd be able to constantly, that's why, that's one of the reasons the information horizon is important. Uh, let's see if we can write something down about this. Uh, okay, the triangle and the information horizon. Um, uh, one of the reasons a regular controlled, uh, you know, like carefully controlled, uh, let's write this, uh, information horizon, which regularly, I can, I actually have rich type, rich text here, uh, uh, which regularly uh, presents information to uh, players is so that the dance, let's call it, can happen, can, can take place, uh, like properly. Uh, so the dance, let's just write that real quick. The dance, we'll just call it that, is um, I see your, uh, let's, let's, let's do it like this, uh, like a number list. I see you're going, you, you know, you added, like you built two uh, early units. I respond by uh, making one defense thing, or not defense, uh, late, late, sorry, thing. And let's put these in the right colors so that it's nice and clear. Uh, blue, uh, okay. You see my late thing and decide you can now switch to uh, doing a mid game thing. Right? Uh, and this kind of just, keep, you sort of see where this is going. Um, I respond to your mid game thing by uh, switching back to uh, early things, right? Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's the kind of, and this should be happening. Uh, yeah, uh, players should constantly be revolving around the triangle, uh, making, and also, you know, they should never be doing something that's like hard econ and like hard defense or whatever. Uh, making, you know, complex uh, uh, strategic choices that aren't hard, uh, you know, aren't um, sort of like deeply in one of the corners. Uh, but are, but have biases towards a corner. Are you going to go through your app tool? Yes, I have been doing that. Uh, that's that's what we're doing right now. That's what that's what this is. I've been up updating this. Um, if someone was feeling a little glib, they could maybe say this dance resembles the game Simon Says on some level. I you that's just a joke. Not looking to derail the conversation. But I still think it's worth uh, addressing, even if it's a joke. Because, um, you know, jokes are partially real. That's why, that's why, that's how they like interact with the world. Um, so how is this not like a Simon Says kind of interaction? Well, I think it's just because it's very complicated and because here's, here's why it's not Simon Says actually. Here's why it's not Simon Says. Why, and this is actually a, a really important and interesting, I think, uh, component to this conversation. Dance, not a simple matter of Simon Says. And I, again, I know you don't need to know, say that you hear this because I know you actually know this, but because uh, you were joking. But, but just to clarify it, like, uh, when I see a player, player making, uh, you know, some early choices, it is not, uh, it's not necessarily the case 
uh, and, and like and I'm going kind of mid game. It isn't always the case that I need to dramatically switch gears. So, cause like, because they might just be going a little bit uh, early game win. And it's really my understanding of the system is being tested here because uh, I, I'm sort of being asked like, do they have enough to win here? Right? Like, are, is their rush strong enough to win the game? And if not, maybe I shouldn't switch gears. And maybe I should like kind of keep going for this, you know, expansion or whatever it is, this investment strategy that I have right now. Maybe I shouldn't switch gears. Maybe, maybe this time I actually shouldn't do the dance, right? Sometimes so, the, like uh, a, you know, the, the biggest question about the dance is whether and when to defect from the dance, right? Because sometimes it's like you just have this knowledge and you're like, no, I don't, you don't have enough rush shit to make me switch to the next step of the dance, right? Um, and so sometimes there's this like, there's this moment where you're like, hmm, yeah, you don't have enough. I'm not switching. I'm sticking with what I'm doing here. Uh, so, so I should, and I, I didn't really make that clear, I guess here, but, but it's, it's a really complicated question of like, I see you doing this thing, you know, and, and I guess sometimes this gets framed as like faking someone out, right? Like, so someone might be like, oh, I'm, you, you know, I'm, let them see that I have Zerglings or whatever. And they'll think I'm going for blankety blank. And, uh, you know, really, I, 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 you know, I'm not a big like person. I'm not, I wouldn't. Some people think there's a lot of like yomi and reading and all that kind of stuff, but I, that's not even, we can put that aside for now. What there is, is an understanding of the system that both players have. And they, if they see a few Zerglings or they see a few Rushy units or whatever it is, um, I don't want to look at the other players, what other players are doing. Well, uh, I mean, ideally there should only be one player, right? But if there's going to be two players, um, then the other player needs to be, that's not a joke though, just looking to derail the conversation. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I know what you mean. I think a lot of games, a lot of games have that problem of like, I, I agree with you, like Race for the Galaxy is one of my favorite games ever, but I do not want to look at what the other player is doing because it's like a whole nother board worth of shit. Um, and it's like, no, I don't, I don't want to look at all that crap. It's too much. So this is not, you, you know, a lot of games don't do a good job with the information horizon, I think. Um, I mean, but in Race for the Galaxy, it's not that bad, actually. It's like, they, you know, you, they put out one or two new cards per turn. And you're just like, oh, okay, I see you built a, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like, uh, yeah, like you, you built a couple of like blue planets or something, um, you know, or like production, production planets. So it's like, okay, well, now I know that I can respond to that by whatever. Um, so there's not that much, it's not that bad in Race for the Galaxy, but there's a lot of games where it is that bad. It's really terrible to have to look at because it's not a strictly controlled information horizon. And that's what you get with like scouting and, and whatever um, in, in something like StarCraft. Um, yeah. So yeah, the biggest question about the dance is whether and when to defect from the dance. I think that's, I think that's kind of a cool, that's kind of a cool way to think about it. Um, so let's see, too interactive. Yeah, well, it depends on, I don't know about too interactive. Uh, I, I think I know what you mean, but I think there's other problems that are not related to this that cause that. Uh, then never mind. It wasn't a joke, and I meant to bring the combo here. Uh, no more words. Not dramatically switching gears is what you thought was the proper response to what they did, though. Like, it's all part of the dance. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, ultimately everything, you know, it's, it's kind of like we live in a deterministic universe, and, like, everything I'm saying right now is all just like a matter of like the atoms in the universe interacting in certain ways. It's all just like this, you know, mechanistic thing, but like within, you know, human consciousness and our perception of things, um, there are real like choices here. Whereas like literal Simon says, uh, the actual game Simon says, um, feels very deterministic and very like, um, you know, square peg and square hole, that kind of thing. Um, whereas I would say that this, uh, strategy games feel more like conversation or art, right? In art and in conversation, like when you draw a picture, it may be that in some like, you know, uh, 
some sort of like um weird way that humans can't perceive that every stroke you draw is all just like you know a matter of the universe uh, all the atoms in the universe you know sort of this is the result of the physical interactions of the universe that make you draw this line just this way right uh but you don't feel that at all that that's completely uh not n noticeable to you right and same with uh conversation like when i'm talking right now i feel like i can just say anything i could just say like light bulb and you know uh what is this i have some walnuts here I got, like a thing of walnuts i can just say walnuts blah, 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 right but even that might be uh completely determined by uh previous conditions i mean the walnuts were here obviously um so but it doesn't feel that way and so that's the big difference is just uh, the a matter of human perception i think um the game i think of when i hear simon says is very different from whatever you're talking about okay well simon says um Oh, you know what? Fuck, I'm thinking of the game Simon. Yeah, this whole fucking time I was thinking of the game Simon, not Simon Says. But I think they're the same thing, right? Pretty much. I mean, they kind of have the same. This is always what I've been thinking about. So, yeah, this game, Simon, it shows you a sequence of lights. And then you just press that sequence of lights. It's just a memory game. I think that Simon Says is the same thing, though. But this is always what I had in my head when I was thinking of Simon Says. I thought this was called Simon Says, but it's just called Simon. But yeah, see, it does a little sequence, and then you just have to press the sequence, right? And this feels... Um, this feels very... Uh, different. Than, than art. And I think that strategy games are more like art. Uh, whereas a lot of console games, when we talk about, like, oh, console games are like Simon Says... Uh, what we're really saying is that they feel less like art, less like conversation, and more like something like this. Um, where it's literally just telling you to do X, Y, Z, and you do X, Y, Z. Um, so let's see. Uh, Simon Says is very open compared to science. Oh, I see. So someone says Simon Says do X, and you gotta do X, but they say do X without the Simon Says. You can't, right, okay. Yes, yeah, so there's a little, in, either, in both cases, there's a little execution thing going on there. That's right, yeah, in, in, but in, regardless of the, yeah, regardless of whether it's Simon Says or whether it's Simon, which I, I had been thinking of this whole time, I just realized, um, I think No More Birds doesn't believe that console games are not art. I agree, I'm not saying that console games are not art, uh, but I'm just saying in terms of the interaction itself, because like console games are art for many, many, many different reasons. I mean, they, they have, they contain narratives. They, uh, I would say they are less art only in the regard of their interactive systems, their rule sets and how the player interacts with them. I think that is less art like than, than is the case in strategy games, but I'm not saying that they're not art. I mean, like we're talking about, uh, Dark Souls. It's less like doing art, right, exactly, in terms of what you're doing. If we're talking about Dark Souls right now, like, that game is, like, absolutely, clearly, obviously, and undeniably art. Uh, you know, or, I'm, I mean, take, take the worst, I don't know, take the worst console game that you can think of. I, like, I'm thinking of, like, Castlevania 64 was, seems to, a lot of people think that that was a bad game. Um, uh, or, I don't know. Name some bad games for me that people think are bad. I think GTA is kind of bad. It's still art, absolutely. Um, and actually, GTA is a lot more toy-like, so it actually is a little more art-like, maybe, than... Uh... And that's the other thing, is that art-like doesn't mean good. <laughs> Just because it's more art-like doesn't mean it's good. I mean, I think GTA is more art-like than uh, Dark Souls, but I, I think I'd rather play Dark Souls. <coughs> um, yeah, less like doing art, that's right. I think something very toyish can be more arty than a strategy game. Yeah, I think so, too. I think so, too. Uh, toys are very art-like. Um, and, you know, my opinion on toys... Like, I don't, I don't love toys. I, I don't have time for toys, you know? Um, so the reason I like strategy games is they're kind of, like, in the middle there a little bit between, like, toys are, are pure art. They're just, like... They're like Legos, you know? Legos are toys. Minecraft, uh, creative mode, like, that kind of thing. Those are, like, pure toys, and they're absolutely, like, very art-like interaction. Um... On the other hand, you have things that are like, you know, puzzles, um, which are very not art-like. Um, they're very like, find the solution, that kind of thing. And then you have contests, which are very... In fact, I would say a lot of these things... I would say that Simon... 
uh, this game Simon here. This is a contest, right? It's a memory contest, but it's uh, but it's a contest. And I think that actually a lot of um, a lot of console games, uh, when when we say that they're like Simon says, what we're saying is that they're they're a little bit puzzly contesty, right? Um, whereas um, our colored pencils art, I think drawing with color colored pencils is uh, is a is art. I don't know if. I guess colored pencils, like designing a colored pencil, could be could be art. Sure, that's what you mean. Um, I I think that art is the process of human creativity, right? Or is like is like the product of human creativity, right? Balked at Legos are art. Legos, I mean, using Legos is absolutely art, right? I mean, I, I, there's two ways to use Legos, I guess. Though there's the follow the um, there's follow the instructions Legos, right? So, so sometimes some people get Legos and this boggles my mind, but some people buy Legos and then they just make the thing that's in the instruction manual. And then they're just like, okay, I finished my Legos. And I'm like, Ooh. like a, uh, like a uh, theremin music a little bit about that. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, to me, Legos are all about like playing with them and creating with them. Uh, you know, like. I don't know, creative Lego things. I don't know. Uh, Lego creations. Come on, show me some cool shit. See, yeah, boom. Here, look at all this weird crap. I mean, these are really weird. These are really, like, intense. You're going to find, like, the most bizarre things in the world. But, like, you know, it doesn't have to be... It doesn't have to be this. Uh, but, like, people make all kinds of weird stuff with Legos. I mean, it's pretty hard to deny that... Uh, Legos are a medium for art to be made in. And these things are very weird. But yeah, like this kind of stuff. Like, uh, you know, I would make this kind of stuff a lot as a kid. Spaceship. Lego spaceship. Um, I would make a lot of spaceships. Just like Lego Movie 2, that guy was obsessed with making spaceships. Um, where's the spaceship that looks like a spaceship I would have made, though? Because a lot of these spaceships, they all look too good. A lot of times I would make these shitty ass spaceships that are made out of the components that were supposed to be for like building a house, but you make a spaceship out of it. Yeah, no, no one uploaded that picture. Oh, here we go. Like this. So many of my spaceships look like this. I'm sure that's true of many of you as well. Yeah, what I mean by art is just the products of human creativity. And that's the question is like, um, at the end of a Go game, and, um, you know, which I think is a strategy game. Um, the, the board that appears there, there's some, some there's like, a, like a, pr a product was created that, uh, that is the product of like human creativity, ingenuity, all that kind of stuff. Whereas, um, you know, that, one of my problems with all the console games is like, you just kind of go through these motions and you reproduce things that were already produced. Uh, I mean, puzzles, are, pu let's take a puzzle, you know, like a, I don't know, what's a, what's a puzzle game? Like uh, Professor Layton or something. You know, if you complete your 100% Professor Layton, you haven't really like produced anything creatively. You've just reproduced or you've um, sort of like reenacted. Uh, you've, you've performed, I don't know what the right word is for it, but, but hopefully you can see what I'm getting at. And it's not, nothing is like 100% here. Um, I'm just trying to like talk about different, like different, kinds of things. <laughs> uh, I think labeling something art is a pretty useless exercise because the word so overloaded has lost its substantive meaning. Okay. Uh, I think you gave a different definition. That's what some people think. The standard English rules apply at an S. We're saying more or less art. I was working on a shmup and I would look up Lego ships as an inspiration. They're almost all already pixel art. Yeah. Art equals not following instructions. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like not following instructions, but it's like some amount of not following instructions. Yeah. Some kind of creative thinking, some kind of like original, some kind of, it doesn't have to be like this innovative, like mind blowing thing, obviously, but like, you know, I don't know, like think about like, um, like a mashup, right? Like, uh, like, like a lot of mashups, song mashups are, are art because they've taken two things and they've combined them in like a creative way. Uh, they have a lot of derivative material in them. It's not like you have to be completely original. Um, you know, I, I agree. I think the one thing I would say is like, you know, you should be very chill with your definitions of art. 
because I think you can really go uh, too far with them and be too, you know, like prescriptive with them. But I think descriptively speaking, art is generally things that are the product of human creativity, generally speaking. Uh, what else? I mean, the answer wasn't just anything and everything possible. Some puzzle games are way more creative than others. Zachtronics, for example. They're, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone keeps talking about these Zachtronics games. I really need to play those uh, because uh, I'm hearing a lot more of that. We're just so inclusive that everything can be art in the right context. Yeah, sure. But um, we also use the word, you know, and if we're ever able to use the word, it means that there must be something that we're referring to. And I think that what you're saying put aside if i say that to make choices in a strategy game is more art like than it is to perform the inputs in a you know a single player narrative console game where you're kind of like going down a corridor and like everybody who plays it more or less does the same thing i understand that i understand that uh, to me that seems understandable what i mean by that it's more creative right we can just use the word more creative. That's fine. I don't, I don't really care. Um, okay. So anyways, yes, back to the triangle. Uh, I did want to make, uh, let's see. So this is, this is good. We've covered some other things here. So now I do need to like formalize what I mean by, this is like the totally safe zone. Uh, this is like the semi safe zone, maybe. Um, I need a better color for this area here. And like, and actually I should probably just blur this guy out because, um, yeah, yeah. Cause like the, the idea here is that this is all, in fact, this, maybe this triangle should be blurry as well. Maybe that's the way I should do it. Um, tell me more about mid game wins. Um, let's just do it like that for now. It's fine. It's kind of what I had before, actually. Um, mid-game wins? Well, uh, a mid-game win would be you are making yourself a little bit vulnerable early by uh, investing in some way. You're, you're opening up some kind of window <clears throat> in the early game. Um... Uh, I'll respond to no more birds chat in a second. Window. Um, so, so I'm making myself a little bit vulnerable very early on, um, to get a, a spike in the middle of the game. Right. Um, and, and obviously that's, that's a really simplification. That's a simplification because, you know, you have to sort of make sure you're not too vulnerable. Um, yeah, so this doesn't apply to fixed time games. Fixed time games, um, you know, and and one of the outcroppings of this piece of theory is that we shouldn't make fixed time strategy games, which already I think a lot of people already think for maybe this reason, but for maybe related reasons, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, this wouldn't apply to something that has a fixed time game. It is kind of interesting to think about like how you can apply something like this to a fixed time game, but... Um, but let's put that aside for now. For now, it's yeah, this just doesn't apply to those. Uh, why doesn't the rush just win when you open yourself up? Right, and there, the answer to that is, one, they don't, know, they don't really know, they don't have a full grasp over the system. Let, let me just right type this out. All right, uh, if I'm going slightly econ, and again, you're never like going hard econ. That should not be a thing in the game. Or if it is a thing, it's just like you instantly lose for doing it. Um, it's like a dumb thing to do. But if I'm going, if I'm leaning econ, let's talk about that. Leaning, the word leaning is good. Um, yeah, all uh, movements around the triangle are leans, not hard commitments or, or are usually, let's say usually leans, very rarely hard commitments. Okay, what did I spell this wrong? Oh, whoops, yeah, one T. Um, I forgot which direction the RPS goes. Uh, 
Well, I mean, so, okay, let, let's, let's answer this. If I'm leaning econ or mid game, right? Why doesn't the opponent just rush and win? Here's a few answers to this. Uh, well, it's really just one answer. Uh, the answer to this is um, the game is sufficiently complex and um, your lean is only partially uh, public knowledge, like is only is 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 partially hidden information. Uh, it is possible that a player that that a player would be good enough to uh, to just rush and win, but that's 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 the test of the game. <laughs> that's the skill of the game is knowing the system well enough to make that judgment, right? Because uh, these are not like, no one's putting a flag in the ground and saying like, okay, everyone, I'm leaning econ now, you know? It's, these are things that we would see like after the game is over. Uh, like in a, watching a, re a replay or something, you'd be like, oh, okay, here there might've been a window to win. Uh, so it's not like while you're playing, you're like, you just see this big econ flag appear and you're like, okay, well, here I go, rush and I win. It's not like that at all. Uh, but if you're able to see, oh, they are leaning a little bit um, econ, then you have, then that's like, that's what the game is about, is seeing those leans. Uh, uh, you know, strategy games are about being able to uh, to identify and respond to those leans. Actually, it's just like identify those leans. That's it. That's like all strategy games are about. More like, why do they have that RPS relationship? I didn't mean like, why doesn't the player just rush and win? Why do they have an RPS relationship? Well, because if I see that you are doing some investment-y type stuff now, uh, that means, you know, to the extent that I'm right, that means that you will be more, vol like you will have, you'll, what investment is, is putting resources away now so that they more resources will come back later, right? Um, and so there should be a window there where I can exploit that. because you have put away some resources for investment. I have not done that. So I should be able to, to apply pressure and possibly win, or at least, you know, get an advantage. And that's the other thing too, is that it's not about like, that's why it's a dance and it's a, it's a constant, you know, flowing thing is because like, it's really just about like getting small advantages here and there. Didn't know there was investment involved. I mean, what strategy game doesn't have investment? I've never, I've never heard of or thought about a strategy game. I don't think it's possible to have a strategy game without some kind of investment, right? Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a Euro game, you build some building, right? That building doesn't do anything for you right now, but like over time, it'll start like paying dividends or whatever. But it, it actually costs you 10 gold to build the building right now. So you're actually like way out of gold at that point. Didn't know specifically, the point of the triangle was extra focus on investment. Um, well, everything is about investment, right? Um, so an, a rush win would be investing in right now. Because you're, you're buying some rushy units, so you're investing in this. A econ thing would be about investing later, right? In, investing a few steps ahead. So you're putting some money aside now to invest. Uh, and then a defense win would be uh would be investing in basically outlasting so that's the other thing too is that like i think that we when we look at this triangle we think like okay from the beginning of the game the player is deciding what's my strategy going to be and that's really not how it should work because you have to be responding constantly to new information that's coming out 
Um, and so it's an ever evolving process, the process of building a strategy. And um, so, so that's why the idea of like a defense win from the beginning doesn't like sort of feels weird. These two make sense because like right from the beginning, you're like, okay, I'm going for a rush. Uh, but you know, any of these could happen from any point in the game, really. Um, you could think about like, let's say we're halfway through the game. We're 20 minutes into a 40 minute, average 40 minute long game. From this point, I can now go for an early win, right? Or I can now invest and go for the mid game win. Or I can now go for the defense, which means trying to stop a, an early investment. That's really what defense is, is building against an early investment, an investment now, right? So defense, if I was to do defense now, it is, you know, building uh, defensive structures, taking actions that deny the other player disruption, um, player actions that would stop this, right? That, that's another key point that I should write down. Um, uh, strategies are not uh, decided at the beginning of the game, but rather an evolving process uh, that's constantly being re-evaluated. Um, uh, at any point in the game, you can look at this triangle, theoretically, and, uh, why am I spelling so many words today? Uh, yeah, you're not thinking about them as strategy. Well, I do, but the, I mean, one of the problems with the terms rush, econ, defense, specifically, and maybe this is a problem with early win, mid game win, late game win, maybe this should be thought of as now, invest now, Here's another, let's, let's try this out. Invest later. And this would be like, like counter invest now or something like that. Um, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this. Like, um, I almost think that in a weird way, defense is, is almost like, in a weird way, defense is almost more rushy in a sense than rush. Um, because defense is like, you're spending resources to, to, um, what are you investing in? How do you phrase that? I know I picked the terms. Well, I didn't really pick the terms. I'm, I'm building off of existing, uh, stuff. By the way, David Serlin has written about this stuff. So, uh, you know, take it up with him. And other, other people have written about these things. Uh, I feel like early, mid, and late is probably not good framing for that reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. That's a good point. Um, so but what would this be? This would be invest. I guess, you know, in a way, you could write this as this is actually invest now. Like you're actually getting, and this is like invest soon. And this is invest later. Does that kind of make sense? Because defense when you're like disrupting the opponent when you're building you know bunkers in your base these are things that like you're actually you're kind of getting the benefits of right now uh mitigating attack yeah that's another way i was gonna put it like uh mitigate i don't but like like or it's like counter counter I'm not trying, just trying to think of a good way to like phrase this. Um, so in Magic, we use the term aggro, mid-range, and control. Right, control is a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, aggro, mid-range, and control. That, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, mid-range plays control. Wait. And it plays aggro against control. Oh, so your triangle is like backwards or something. Not sure. Um, because you, you, yeah, uh, I don't know, like, this is like, yeah, it's like, it's like anti, 
anti-rush, I mean, or, I don't know, anti... I don't know a good way to phrase this, but it's, it's like, it's basically respond to, uh, invest soon. Uh, like blocking, maybe. I don't know, that, 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 control, control is okay. I don't know, control's a little weird to me. I don't, I don't know, I'm just not sure what that's, why is it called control? That's weird. Mid range is flexible. Yeah, I don't know. Magic, Magic's got a weird thing going on, I think. I'm not sure. I feel like, <clears throat> is mid-range... I feel like is mid-range just any position between the other two doesn't deserve a point on the triangle. Um... Well, by the way, in terms of this being a triangle, there could there doesn't have to be a triangle. There could be other points here. The problem with a two... We already talked about the point problem with a two... I think Dasik brought up the idea of a a line instead of a triangle. And I, I think I adequately explained to him why that was a problem. I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was in the chat somewhere. Don't make me do it again. Um, generally mid range beats aggro. So yeah, I don't, I, I think it might just be its own language in magic because aggro, you know, like, if you're getting an expansion in StarCraft, for example, how would you apply those terms? Do this for me, E-Priest. Uh, how would you apply these terms to StarCraft? And like a player, player A is going, uh, is building expansion and player B is building a bunch of Zerglings. I would think the Zerglings would be aggro and the expanding person would be doing uh, an econ thing. Yet you're saying that Econ beats aggro. And typically, a rush is the answer to an early expansion. <clears throat> I'm saying teching beats aggro. So what beats teching? Econ beat teching? Wait. Huh? Okay, send me an article or something about this. I'm sure there's something, there's some actual resource about this. I'd like to take a look at that for sure. Um, blocking, uh, we could just say blocking now. That's fine. Invest now. Or like disrupt. I don't know. I have to go, I have to go back over this for sure. But yeah, anyways, the idea, the idea to me is, is very solid in my mind. It's just a matter of like making it clear, I think. Um, what was I typing here? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. How do you feel about two separate axes? No more birds asks. Two separate axes, offense versus defense and invest now versus invest later. Two separate axes. So you mean like a like a like a chart like this, like a let's uh, make a new thing here. Cross graph, yeah. So like uh, boop boop. So you're saying, if I'm not mistaken, um. Four lines, like a cross. Oh, I see. Okay. I see what you're saying, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you're saying invest now, invest later. An offense and defense? But I don't, I, the weird thing is like, what does it mean to invest later in defense? Like, what would you, what would that? Uh, like, I think that this is, I think you can do something with this. Uh, invest now. Wait, what does invest now mean? Right, you're spending money now. So like, this would be like rush kind of, and this would be, uh, 
I guess econ. And then you're saying that uh yeah, I don't think I don't think that defense is its own axis. Well, I'll like I don't think like I don't I don't know that there's another axis here like that. Um <clears throat> um because defensing now is rush this is econ but then you're saying like what what is explain this defense now defense later that's kind of weird and this this also doesn't interact with like win like this is all about like what are these things relationship with win windows, right? That's really what it's all about. So like, if a unit is sort of here, that means that they're like, they're kind of, they have a rushy relationship. If they're kind of here, that means that they're kind of like a defensive unit or a defensive thing or a disruptive thing. If they're kind of here, uh, that means that they are like about, you know, an investment related unit. So, um, or like a like an econ, a very expensive unit that you have to invest a lot in to to, to get. Whereas this, um, the rush, this this axis axis is still right, but um, I have trouble with this axis. I think that this axis is kind of weird. Like I don't understand, but maybe you explain it to me. Let me know. Marcus says this is a political compass. Invest now. <clears throat> is libertarian right invest now is offense is authoritarian right uh hair machine says i it depends i guess on if there's a real difference between invest in attack and invest in defense but usually it kind of works out like just investing in your economic strength that you use to win on all fronts yeah um here's another way to put this let's put it this way uh, w win now, win later, how about this, don't lose, avoid losing, what do you think about that? I think this expresses it pretty clearly, because avoid losing is, uh, is just trying to disrupt and protect what we're trying to create life uh yeah this is the, the strategy triangle which by the way i should mention again that uh it's up on itch.io uh keep for gun games itch.io slash the tri strategy triangle i'm gonna be updating it soon um after this uh stream um that is actually pretty good yay thanks um yeah i like this avoid losing right because that's, that's what you're doing. I think win now, win later, and avoid losing is much better than rush econ defense. Woo! We got two thumbs ups. Um, <clears throat> nice. So let's actually put those first. I still think that these other terms um, might be helpful as like uh, to help people understand. I'll put them in quotes. Does avoid losing make sense without win later? Well, uh, obviously, yeah, at some point you're going to win. But I think what's good to think about this triangle is to think about just within a horizon, right? And if you keep avoid losing, you know, eventually that means you're going to win. Uh, but yes. These these are these are sort of local localized strategies. I think we should call them econ, recon, and decon. Good job. You said it. Um. There we go. I think it's gonna be confusing to have the early, mid, and late, personally. Okay, that's almost, yeah, that, the problem with early, mid, and late is that it makes people think about the whole structure of the match, whereas what we're really talking about is over a timeline, you know, a shorter timeline. 
Uh, yeah, someone already talked about the aggro control combo. Uh, EY Priest was talking about that. Yeah, applying this repeatedly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's, let's write some stuff about that. Uh, you know, strategic, uh, the tri- the, the strategic, uh, places on the triangle are repeatedly visited, um, with a somewhat short, uh, you know, timeline in mind. Econ still needs more identity, but this is getting somewhere. Twitch is having trouble buffering it. Oh, I think that might be on your end, actually, because I think on my end it looks good. Anyone else having trouble with stream stuff? Uh, the way you put you win in defense is one, defend, two, rush. Yeah, exactly. So at some point, I guess you probably never win with defense. You've gotten a few buffers. Oh, crap. What the hell? Oh, you know what? Maybe it could be this, actually. Or it could be this. Or it could be this. Uh, let me know. I think I might have just fixed it, but let me know if it happens again. It should be fixed now. But yeah, let me know. Um, okay. <clears throat> cool. So I think we made some really good progress on this, actually. Uh, la 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 la. And this, uh, you know, happens repeatedly throughout a match. You could even say these are these are interacting with like, these are like describing arcs. Um, uh, uh, middle, mid to long arcs, which I guess is what my article was a little bit about. Uh, describe this as temporal rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, a little bit, but it's not so hard. You know, rock, paper, scissors is very like, you did this, I did this, I win. And this is much more like, you know, I gain a little bit of an advantage around that because uh, I'm like, what I did is a little bit good against what you kind of did. You know what I mean? It's not so uh, cut and dry. Uh... And then combining with non-temporal RPS, you get some nifty orthogonal counters. Yeah, the idea is that it should be really complex. And that, um, so like, if, for example, if you had a unit that is, um, you know, well, let's bring back this guy. If you have a unit uh, that is, I don't know, like, so here's the middle where nothing should go in the middle, by the way. We haven't talked about that yet. But um, let's say you have a unit that's like here, you know? It's like, if I, yeah, I guess going defense against that is good, but it's like, it's only a little bit good. You know, it's like a little bit advantageous. Or if it's here, it's like, well, defense is okay against it. This is a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like, if I, if I did this, it's like, eh, it's okay against that. If I, if I did this, technically, theoretically, that's like the best thing to do against it. But there shouldn't be really something that's like here. Um... And there shouldn't be something that's here. Uh, because this things in this identity, things, things that like are here, you can just use them for everything. Uh, and so you should really make sure there isn't something there. Uh, the win framing also makes me think of the entire match and like RPS rather than eking out little advantages over the course of the match by reading the dance here. Right. Yeah, the wind framing, I agree. Uh, well, let's say this then, advantage now. Advantage later. And this could just be like, deny advantage. How's that, even better?
I like lunge, parry, and prepare. We can add those. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I think that might actually be too direct. Uh, defense only denies advantage to rush, not to advantage to later. Deny advantage now. Right? That makes sense? How about that? Put that in quotes. Put them all in quotes. So that they're like things. How's that sound? I think we're trying to find something game agnostic. Yeah, UI priest, yeah. And yeah, and, and for your for your particular game, it might help you to rename. In fact, that's one of the first things I say in the document is to name your label your axes. Right? Uh, rush is just one way to express something like an early game win. And I, I need to rewrite some of this for sure. I tend to use rush econ defense. But the, you know what? Actually, what's interesting is that like how you label that and the fact that you call it rush, that's going to change what you design. So, you know, these kinds of tools are really, I think, important. I, and I feel like I feel like a lot of game designers don't use these kind of things. And uh, I don't know. I to me, it, it makes the process of a design feel a lot more um, directed, and uh, it like gives me a tool, something to test against. You know, I, I feel like a lot of game design is just um, it's very like intuitive and uh, iterative, right? So you're like, oh, okay, maybe it'd be cool to have blankety blank, you know, and you make that. And then you like play test it and you see like, oh shoot, this thing's too strong or like this doesn't have the flavor I wanted or blah, 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 it doesn't work in some way. And that all, that all works. Um, but I feel like these kinds of tools are also, uh, are also helpful in a, in a totally different way from iterating and play testing. Um, is there something to thinking about it in terms of short-term investment versus long-term investment? The aspect of trying to optimize for payout now versus larger payout later is a hard thing for humans to calculate and is more general than just a combat game. Yeah, I think that's what that is. This is this is a long-term investment now. This is, a, a, you know, or sorry, rather, this is a short-term investment advantage now, trying to get an advantage right now. Uh, this is trying to get an advantage later. And this is trying to deny the now advantage. Um... Yeah, I guess it's more scientific-ish. It's like in a more science, I would actually not say scientific, I would say it's more like theoretical. You know, it's like a theoretical tool um, for understanding what you're designing um, in a different way. And it's it's not even better, it's just like a, it's in a different way. And that's that's also what I, um, what I, you know, I think I need to highlight this more is that, um, is that uh, how you label these axes and how you build these tools is as much of a creative process and is going to be as influential on your final design as uh, as anything else you do. Um, yeah. If there's anything else in here I want to talk about. Yeah, there's more notes in here that we can definitely talk about. Yeah, this is the the PDF, by the way, that explains it. I'm I'm gonna expand on it a lot, um, for sure. Some would argue that in uh, No More Birds says, uh, some would argue that for in order for something to be a strategy game, it needs short term and long term stuff term stuff going on. Absolutely. Yeah, somebody said um, the Crouch Mode earlier said, uh, I wasn't aware we were talking about games that have investment, but I I'm guessing that that um. The crouch mode just meant to like some kind of like literal like a move called invest or like something that's like oh this is a banking game or something whereas i don't mean that i just mean like anything like anything where you're not getting any benefit now necessarily but you're going to get benefit later um i wonder if there's something to dividing this into an offensive space and a defensive space each one could balance between doing that thing now versus building long-term advancement. Uh, not even gonna bother explaining what I meant. Uh, okay. Uh, once you add a third axis, that's when it gets trickier to talk about. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree that there's there's. It's funny because actually, no one ever has problems with uh, Rush. Oh, by the way, how's the stream? Is the stream working better now? Because I closed a couple of things. Let me know. Um, I, no one's ever had trouble with this, and a lot of people have trouble with this and this. These two are the ones that people are like, ah. I have to check this out. I'm gonna check out my own clip on the stream. What is this? I almost think that, in a weird way, defense is... Oh, my audio almost, sucks. Like, in a weird way, defense is almost more rushy, in a sense, than rush. I like that, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so the stream is good now. Um, but yeah, what I was trying to get at with defense being more rushy than rush, which I agree sounds strange, is that, um, defense is kind of interacting with the system in a very, very, very direct way. Um, even more direct sometimes than, than this is. Um, like, I think that defense might... It sort of, it depends. I don't know. Cancel that thought. Cancel that thought. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so I think we're about where I wanted to get with this stream. Um, but yeah, let me remove this little guy here. I'm going to be updating this. So if you've already downloaded it, download it again. I will um, reply. I will make a .zip file for people who .rar files are simply not good enough for them. And uh, yeah, so we'll have zip files, RAR files, the whole fucking thing. Uh, yeah. In fact, what I could do is just uh, put all the, I don't even need to zip it. I could just put them all, I should probably just put them all like, I don't know. You don't have WinRAR? Oh. What do you use to unzip things? I just thought that WinRAR was what you use to do that with. But maybe there's other things. I don't know. Um, oh, does Windows... Windows can just do zip now, right? Yeah, Windows. Because Windows didn't used to be able to do that before, I think, Windows 10? 7Z is the new standard. Oh, oh, oh. I see. All right, cool. Well, any questions before we uh, finish up? Because I'm going to go and I'm going to go update all this stuff and I'm going to re-upload it. And because I actually I have a big Reddit post. I don't know if I, I, I think I posted on the Discord. Um, There's like a lot of upvotes on this uh, on the Reddit on the game design subreddit. And uh, so I want to get this update up soon. Uh, you can go on a website and unzip these uh, RAR files these days. Uh, it just turns into a zip that you download. Oh, interesting. WinRAR had some exploit found recently. Oh, OK, well. I do like that WinRAR every once in a while tries to get me to buy it. I've been using it for free for like 25 years or something. Um, it's like, you know, I, I think today I'm going to I'm going to buy WinRAR. Yeah, I think today's the day I bought WinRAR. OK, well, I still use WinRAR, so. <laughs> OK. Uh, this was good, though. We talked about uh, the dance not being a matter of Simon Says, uh, which probably this would not go into the document. That's more of just a conversation for us. Um, but it was an interesting one anyway. Triangle of the Information Horizon. Why this is so important. When we're a special edition lockdown mode. Oh, my. All right, cool. Well, thanks for hanging out, y'all. And uh, I will be back tomorrow. Let's figure out what we're doing tomorrow. Uh, not this, but this. Uh, okay, so tomorrow... We don't have anything scheduled yet, but I think I'm going to play some game, probably. Uh, I'm not sure what. I'll take a poll in the uh, Discord and see what we should play tomorrow. Oh, we'll play some game. 
Uh, I would make that Dark Souls, but that's on my Switch, so I can't really do that. Um, Shady Night Demo. Oh, that's a good idea. Or Spiritfarer Demo. Okay. I'll write that down for now. Cool. And then probably on Wednesday we'll do uh, Gem Wizards Tactics. Ultima 7, you will have your time in the sun. Uh, same with you two. Probably these two I will do paper clips because I got to stay on top of that. That's going to be... But yeah, we'll have a new Gem Wizards Tactics build today. Or this at the end of this week. So... Hmm. Yeah, I'll figure that out. Uh... Playing some board games. What board games are y'all playing? John Company. Look that up. That's a weird name for a board game. Did he invent the company? Running the East India Company. It's funny that he was named John Company and yet he ended up running the company. That's probably how he got the job. Uh, let's look at these images. Whoa. Jeez. I feel like graphic design could probably, uh, probably help this a lot. Just because, um, you know, it's like, I think a lot of people would see this and think like, this looks like a, like a horrible cacophony of noise. And the thing is like, it's not that it's too complicated. There are video games are just as complicated. Like there's plenty of things that are that are just as complicated. It's, it's not that complicated, but it's just that the information is not. Um, and this is part of, partly because it's tabletop and it, 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 you know you're so limited in what you can do with like cardboard and stuff. But um, there isn't like um, you could probably do a lot with like hierarchy, like information hierarchy and stuff like that. Uh, 4.1 out of 5 for complexity on BGG, which is super high. So uh, maybe this is really complicated. Uh, looks pretty complicated. And then there's, of course, other things. Um, info density is off the charts. Whole world. Where do I know his name from? Um, brain work. Whole world. I, I don't want to. I, I want to know it before I click it. What did he design? Did he design... Did he design Watergate? No, he didn't. What did he design? Something I've been playing recently. Oh, Root. Okay. I see. That's what it is. I haven't been playing that, actually. Whirly. Okay. A whirly bird. Sweet. Well, John Company looks cool. I uh, will check that out. I don't know if I'll ever play this because uh, I don't know anyone who would play a game that looks like this with me. But uh, Root actually has a cool theme and art. This John Company game is surprising in that regard. Yeah. Whirly gig games. Nice. He should have named his company um, Whole World Company because of John Company. Um... Yeah, Root, it's weird. This is very distinctly different from Root. Like, he really did not want the same kinds of people playing this game, it seems to me. But it's funny because, like, this kind of aesthetic does uh, a bunch of things. Like, it, it actually, I think it intentionally is alienating to a lot of people. Like, it, it wants a particular kind of person who's going to like this game, I think. Um, yeah, but this, that's something that I, my opinion has changed a lot about. Like, I used to think, like, well, you can just kind of, like, you can sort of apply a cute theme, like a really good graphic design and art and stuff to, like, any game, and everyone will like it. And, you know, there's not nothing to that, but I think that's maybe overstated. Uh, there are, you know, there are different people who like different kinds of things, and this is signaling to, you know, people who like you know, heavy economic games and train games and things like that. Um, yeah, it's funny. It's actually, I actually really like these little ribbons. Those are kind of cool. I think this is actually pretty intentional how this, especially knowing 
how uh, how good Root looks. There's something designing the aesthetic of your game to signal to people. Like, how is saying Dark Souls UI being bad actually working for it? Right. Oh, it's a different publishing company. I see. Interesting. Lots of output randomness. Uh-oh. Well, if the game is big enough, that might be okay. This is why Twilight Struggle was number one for so long. It self-selects its audience. Hmm. Yeah, I need to... I'm going to start playing Twilight Struggle pretty soon, actually. I'm excited about that. All right. Well, thanks for watching, y'all. I'm going to log off now. Uh, this has been very productive, and uh, we're going to get a new version of this up soon. And uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, uh, things you'd like to add, um, I'll be in the Discord. And tomorrow we'll play some play some games. And I think I'll try to play some games tomorrow and do some Gem Wizards because we got a build coming out on Friday. A new build should be a good one. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.